Camera's not working. Oh, it will. It spool. It looks like it's spooling. There yes. we go. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? No complaints. I'm glad uh, that we could do this today instead of tomorrow because I'm, because I'm going to go camping and it's you know it's not it it doesn't work out as well. You don't have the I don't have the lighting and all that stuff. Anyway. Yeah. Hello, Eric. I love you. He's saying hi, Mama. I love you too very much. He's going camping with you. He says. Oh, awesome! He always used to love camping. Love camping. Yes, exactly. All right, peeps. Uh, we have been thinking that you know we we uh, very often um, interview notable figures, celebrities, right? But mm -hmm. uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to um, interview the higher self of just regular people like us. So uh, we're going to start with Emma today, as per yeah. Eric's suggestion. So we'll see how that goes. It must be hard to channel your higher self, though. It is. So I'm actually more nervous on this one than I am on. I can on imagine. Top. I can imagine. But let's just start out with you telling us how your journey began. Um, well, I, I think a lot of people have heard my story already, <laughs> but um, it, it all started for me for, I think, when I was little that I noticed that um, I was really sensitive to energies. What do you mean? Of course. How, did, how did that manifest to you? Does... Well, you know, it was like, um, back then it was manifesting in fear. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was scared. I was extremely scared of the dark. Mm. Um, I, um, when, I remember when I... Uh, I was scared of the upstairs for some reason. Um, and I remember every time I would have to go upstairs to my bedroom, um, I always felt like there was a person standing by the staircase. Oh. But I couldn't see anybody, but I could feel like there were eyes pointed at me. I felt like I was being watched. Um, and, uh, you know, I had that every now and then. Now, sometimes I would go into a room and I'd have to wait, like a waiting room for a doctor. And there was nobody there except me. And I, I always felt like, Somebody's here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Know? And it, it, it really brought a sense of fear because I was sensing like I was being uh, stalked in a way. Yeah. Uh, being observed, but I couldn't, uh, you know, see anybody or I couldn't hear anybody. So uh, <laughs> for a long time, I, I just uh, kind of disregarded it as fear. Um, and... Um, I got lucky, I have to say, that I grew up in a family who was very open-minded to the spiritual world. Um, they were not really, I wasn't really um, raised with a specific religion. My mom always said, you know, there's something bigger out there, there's something greater out there. Is it God? Is it something else? We're not sure. Um, but they knew that there is a, a bigger source out there than ourselves. And uh, she just kind of raised me that, you know, it's okay if, if, if we see a spirit and it's okay um, if weird things happen, you know, it's about not freaking out. So my mom was really good with that. Um, and I remember one day I was uh, studying for an exam and I'm a good studier in the morning. So I would get up at 3 a.m. and I would go upstairs. Um, and it would still be dark outside, so I would just have a little light on in the in the living room, and I'd be reciting in my head what I needed to uh, memorize. And I remember looking up, and there was a big round ball of light on the ceiling, and I was like, mm, "Is that from the you know from the little light that's next to me?" So I went like this over the light, but nothing happened up there. And I was like, "Well, that's weird." Um, and I remember all of a sudden it started moving and it just almost like a shooting star. It just, sh you know, like went all, all the way across the ceiling and then it disappeared. And I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. So an orb. I told her about that. And she was like, well, it must have been one of your angels. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, that's kind of weird. Um, and then, you know, about when I'm about eight years old, eight or nine years old, um, my grandfather sexually abused me and um it pretty much took all my attention uh away from that oh yeah um, 
all the attention went into kind of survival mode, trying to cope with what was going on and, and not knowing what to do. You know, I never told my parents what was going on because they were, you know, also having problems themselves. And I, I, I always kind of felt like I don't need to bother them with this. I didn't want to add to the frustrations that were already in the house. I've always been kind of a protector over everybody. I've always protected my family. You know, even if things went south, um, I would always protect my brother and my parents. And, and so I didn't want to put that burden upon them, although I didn't quite fully understand what was going on either. Yeah. I remember being fearful towards him. I remember begging my mother, please don't let me go to grandpa. I don't want to go. I remember that. And she didn't understand why she thought, well, maybe she's just going through a phase. Um, so I remember that. Um, but basically for a long time, all my attention really went to um, trying to survive. Uh, I dealt with a lot of, um, so, you know, I didn't have any confidence within myself. I was scared of people, so I really put my focus on animals. I loved animals. I loved to communicate with them. I did feel like I, I kind of could read their thoughts. So I was trying to save every animal that was injured. Oh Even yeah. People on the street would bring me all the injured animals they oh, would find. Oh wow! Wow. Uh, so I was really. I really had my mindset on being a veterinarian. I really wanted to do that for years and years and years. That was my dream. And um, going through the motions, trying to lead a normal life, um, eventually the abuse stopped when um, my grandfather tried to seduce my mother. Ooh. <laughs> um, and my, my dad was like, okay, this is, uh, yeah, this is not good. So um, all we kind of lost contact with the rest of the family so we we're just good us four. um did, did and, your parents uh, ever find out did, did your parents ever find out i did tell them when my husband told me to tell him oh yeah <laughs> so i was already in my 30s by the time they yeah. found out he had already passed so um it, it, it was hard for them because they never knew. They always knew that I had problems. They knew that I was terrified of talking to people, but they never really knew where it came from. Um, and they just tried to, to support me and sometimes push me. Like I remember I couldn't pick up a phone till I was like 16 because I didn't know it was on the other side, yeah. <laughs> on, on the other side. So, um, or, you know, my mom would say, you know, can you go get me a bread? And, you know, that was only a few steps away from uh, from our house. But going to that bakery and asking for a bread, for me, I, I would have a, I would have a complete meltdown in front of my mom. Yeah. I could not I could not talk to a stranger. So I had no faith in people. I didn't trust anybody. Um, I was scared of people for a very long time. And so all my faith went to, into animals. And um, because of that, I felt confused about who I was. Um, I didn't think I was worth anything. I really had a very low self-esteem. Um, didn't have a lot of friends. I had people knew me, but I didn't really have a lot of close friends. Um, and I remember going to veterinary school to the university it was like, oh my God, it's finally gonna happen. My life is gonna start. <laughs> and it didn't work out. <laughs> I couldn't handle the masses of information that was coming in and um, I panicked. I freaked out and um, I, one day I decided that's it, I'm done. And I locked myself in my mom's house in my bedroom and I didn't come out for two years. So I was in a wow. severe, severe depression for two years. I had a lot of suicidal thoughts um, and I tried everything to work with horses. I tried to go with the police. Uh, who worked with uh, with the horses and uh, I tried different uh, directions but everywhere I went it was kind of turned down and um, you know I remember one day thinking well you know there you it, and you know you just end it and that's it or you do something about it and I remember booking a flight to the, the United States <laughs> and I took off and I went and discovered myself for three months. Uh, I kind of pushed myself because all of a sudden I was there all alone. I had nobody to count on, so I had to talk to people. Mm. 
you know, that really that changed took, that me. That took a lot of courage. I, yeah, it was, you know, I didn't really care either where I ended up. I just took an airplane and left. Wow. I really didn't care. Where did you um, end up? And, you went in Colorado, right? I ended up in Colorado, uh, and I ended up in the YMCA. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and they had a livery there, so uh, I ended up um, being a wrangler in the national park in Colorado in this oh. park. Um, and it was, I mean, that defined who I was. Like I, I, I came home uh, sadly because I really wanted to stay there. I was so happy there, but I came home after my visa had expired, and um, I remember my mom saying, wow, you've really changed. Like I was confident and I knew, okay, it's fine. I was in a state of peace within myself. I didn't, you know, I had to find a job here that I know I wasn't going to like, but I was okay. I was, I was in a good place. Um, and so once I started getting into that good place, uh, I started noticing things around me again. Um, uh, you know, yeah. like that would start popping in and, um, uh, I noticed um, kind of like um, fireworks, I call it, just like little tingly, shiny things that sometimes I could see. And I was like, am I seeing that? And I was like, something's wrong with my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. And uh, But I never really thought, oh, it's, you know, it's a connection or it's, you know, or I'm connecting to something, uh, to energy or anything like that. That really came uh, later when... Um, I started doing a job as a grocery clerk and um, I started noticing that everybody wanted to work with me to tell their story and uh, I now would give them advice. I would say, well, I feel like this and I feel like that and, I, and uh, people would then come to me later on and say, wow, that really happened. That what you just said, it happened and this happened and yeah, you're right. She just met that person and he does look like that and then I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. I was just, you know, trying to be nice to my colleagues, mm -hmm. but know that I was helping them in, you know, in in something that would be interesting. And so, um, more and more people would would ask for my advice, and then I, I my dad dad used cards sometimes for fun, uh, tarot cards. Uh -huh. He would do that for fun, and so I figured, okay, well, let, let me give that a try. So I started with that, and. Um, and so for a long time, I just did, you know, those card readings um, for at least about a year or two, I think, mm -hmm. just friends and colleagues and, and people who were interested in it. I never charged for it. I was like, all right, let's just do it. It was fun. Um, and then uh, I met my husband online, <laughs> which is a, kind of a crazy story um, because... We met each other online. He was in Iraq at the time. He was in Baghdad, and he was in the army. And um, I was here, and I kind of missed America. I missed talking to people and my friends and all of that. And I remember it was the beginning of the chat. I think it was about 14 years ago. Um, and I said, well, let's try it. Let's try the chat. And I had never been in a chat room before. And I said, any Americans out there? And he just popped out and gave, yeah, I'm here. Wow. <laughs> And uh, we talked for about three hours, and it felt like I had known this person for years and years and years. And I was like, wow, that was very weird. And he said, well, okay, next, tomorrow, let's let's talk again, same time. I said, okay. And he didn't come on the next day. And I was in a complete panic. And my mom's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, oh, my God, he was going to come on. He didn't come on. Did something happen? I was completely panicking over this person that I just talked to for three hours. And the day after, he finally came, came on. And he was like, oh, I couldn't get you out of my mind. Um, I, I just um, I kept all, getting all these memories, almost like our memories, because you were in it. But I. He says, you know, you were in a room that I've never seen before. And uh, he was explaining to me what he was seeing. And um, and I said, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but I was worried to death. Um, and a week later, he called me for the first time uh, on the phone. And he asked me to marry him. Whoa. And Whoa. I was like, uh. <laughs> I probably paused for like five minutes. Um, cause my mind was going, are you crazy? You've never even met this guy who knows, you know? Um, and 
my heart was saying yes it just kept screaming to me yes and I was like oh god um, and so I had this battle of uh, do I go with my intuition or do I go with my sense and I went with my intuition and I said yes and so that was that we were engaged after a week and uh, I was like well, how am I going to tell my mom and dad this <laughs> and um. I just blurted it out I'm like remember mom that guy that I was talking to last week yeah he just asked me to marry him and I said yes and my mom was like oh congratulations and I was like wow yelling screaming that's that's what I was expecting I know and she said, well, I have a feeling you guys have a good connection you'll see what happens whatever happens happens she said and I said okay and I think about six months later we we met for the first time and it was like we had been married for centuries we were just there was no shame there was no <laughs> you know no the little giggling thing it was like okay let's do this let's do that and so Everybody declared us crazy, and, and a lot of people didn't believe in us, but we knew what we felt, and, you know, we've been married for 13 years now, and we've always been okay, we've always been happy, so, you know, you need to follow your instincts. When your heart says, yes, yes. go, you know, no matter how crazy it sounds, if it's really that clear, you know, you follow that intuition, you follow that instinct, and so. So when did you start doing mediumship work? Well, after I met him, I uh, I went back to the job that I was working for, and I really wasn't happy there. Um, I had been working there for 15 years, and <coughs> although I loved helping people, <laughs> I didn't like the job that I yeah. was doing. Um, and I also felt like they were taking advantage of me over and over and over again, you know, promising a lot of things and never fulfilling them. And um, uh, I remember being going back down. I was going back into kind of a depression mode. Um, and I, um, I remember telling my husband, you know, I don't want to go back to that negativity. And he said, well, let's look into Buddhism and let's look into mindfulness and things like that. Cause he really wanted to find that balance within himself too. And so we kind of went into that. And I think two weeks later, after we started watching all these modules about Buddhism and why, the, you know, I, I just wanted to know, why are they so happy? <laughs> you know, yeah. how do you do it? Um, and so I really went into that. And then two weeks later, after we starting, started going into it, um, Eric popped up with the Buddha interview on YouTube. And I oh, was like, wow. Oh, okay. Like that. That's how and it worked. Okay. There Eric and I was like, ooh, an interview with Buddha. That would be interesting. But I, I I had never seen, you know, a medium interviewing celebrities or anything like that. I had never kind of even thought about that. And I watched that interview and it felt to me like it was so right on and it felt like it was truth. You know, yeah. it like ate it with me, like, oh my God, that's it. You know, Eric is there. This person, Eric is there. <laughs> Cause I yeah. didn't know was it um and um so i started watching more and more videos and started really started getting into the videos and then i discovered the website and i you know started looking into who eric was and i was like wow this is really cool um and i think about a month later we were really getting into you know we had been meditating for a while and um i remember i was meditating and all of a sudden i see eric's face right in front of me during my meditation i was like Okay, this is kind of funky. <laughs> and he, hey. Oh, that's Eric, all right. He was going, hey. Yeah. And I was like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and so he started talking to me. And um, every time I started meditating again, there he was. Um, and he, he started telling me, you know, you're not in the right place. You know, you're not doing what you need to do. Why are you so scared? Because he knew that I was afraid to change because it, it was a good steady income and it was the only income I had. Gerald yeah. had had strokes um, and at a very young age. Oh, um, yeah. while pregnant twice. Every time I was pregnant, he had a stroke. So oh. I was like, no more. Oh. <laughs> and, oh. um, and so he, he didn't have an income either because we were back in Belgium and, um, and he hadn't had, he hadn't had a chance to work here for a whole year. And so there was no income um or unemployment or anything like that so we were completely dependable on my income and then comes your son saying you need to quit your job and you need to you know That's start a scary 
How am I going to survive? How am I, I can't, you know, you can't create an income that fast, um, especially not in Belgium. I told them, you know, Belgians are a little, you know, they're a little bit behind in, in opening up to this. Oh, really? Um, oh, yeah. I would think they would be more open than Americans. Well, they're very open-minded about a lot of things. But as soon okay. as I tell somebody I talk to dead people, they're like, oh, oh okay. Uh, we get that a lot here, too. <laughs> they step away and go, okay, see ya. <laughs> um, so in that aspect, we're still a little little behind when it comes to being open to the spiritual realm. Uh, this is a very religious country, and so we're still yeah. trying to catch up. And um, so there's your son with this crazy idea. Um, and... He started coming to see me in, in my dreams and in really pushing me. You know, he's like, You gotta get over this fear. You gotta jump. You gotta jump with your eyes closed. You need to trust me. And I was like, Okay. And so I talked to my husband because he had seen him too in his meditations. Oh. And I said, what should we do? You know, and he said, Well, he says, Well, we'll why don't we just, you know, I, he said, I it feels right to me. And I said, Yeah, it feels right to me too, but I'm terrified. That yeah. We just bought a house on one income and, you know, we got house payments to do. What if we can't make it? And he's like, well, let's not think that way. Um, and so we really looked into how to manifest things uh, because Eric was talking about using your thoughts and so on. So we really looked into that. And, um, and so one day I just, I stopped going to work. <laughs> they really got me mad. I dropped everything and I went home and I never went back. Um, and we started a spiritual center. And so we started giving meditation classes and, and readings here and there for people who, who were interested in it. Um, but for about eight months, we really didn't have an income. <laughs> we had like two, three people that would come and meditate. Oh, yeah. uh, that was about it. And I told Eric, you know, we were surviving off our savings and yeah. they were getting really slim. And I was like, Eric, something needs to happen or I'm going to have to go back to work. And I really don't want to do that because I was really feeling comfortable with what I was doing. And he said, give me another week. He said, it's going to be fine. And, um, I had talked to you and had said, hey, how's it going? You know, I had talked to you. And then all of a sudden the conversation came up. Yeah, let's be, why don't you be a guest medium? And, and it just kind of changed from there. And and now, so now I'm really, I go wherever Eric goes. <laughs> he tells me to go there. I'm like, okay, I trust you. You know, <laughs> he made it in a way, he made it happen for us. And um, he's become part of my family. You know, Aww. I talk every day. Um, when I wake up, I always say, Hey honey, <laughs> I go one way and then I go, Hey honey, I go the other way. <laughs> you know? And then Jeff does the same thing. He's like, he wakes up, he's like, Hey dude, what's up? <laughs> you know? We there and we know he can hear us and and so he just he's he's really become part of my family and we just hang out sometimes too, you know. Sometimes I go and pick up my kids and Gerald's like, ah, I don't wanna go. Uh, and so he, he's watching his things on TV, his sports, which I really don't get into. I, I don't mm. understand anything. But he loves his basketball and his American football. And so I let him watch it. I go pick up the kids. And now I'll, I don't like going alone. So I'll say, well, come on, Eric. Let's go pick up the kids. And I hear in my head, all right, let's go. I pick the music, he says. He doesn't oh. like my music. So um, <laughs> He always picks the music, which is really fun because then I get messages that way, like, you know, and I can That's see him singing, singing next to me, which, by the way, he's a horrible singer. Exactly. <laughs> horrible dancer, horrible singer. Horrible singer. He really is. But then he looks at me. I can see his face in my mind, and he just smiles bigly. Uh, and so, yeah, he's just he's become part of my life and, and and it's thanks to him that he gave me the courage to take the step, to take yeah. the leap. That still uh, took a lot of courage on your part. You know, does he yeah. interact with the, with the girls at all? Does he what? Does, does he interact with the girls? Oh yeah, he does. Uh, I remember uh, my youngest Leah, we were in, she was in the tub and, and she was playing and all of a sudden she looks up and she follows something and I'm like, hmm. Like, and I, I ask her, are you following somebody? And she just goes, she just goes like that. And I said, is it Eric? And she goes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Eric. That's cute. Um, 
And sometimes you can see him on um, playing with them on the baby camera. I have a you know one of those cameras because because of their autism, they can't yell, "Mom, I need you," or anything like that. So I have a camera in both their rooms, um, and um, sometimes we just we play with them. And I remember one time. The kids were really wild for some reason. And I was like, there's got to be spirits here. So we turned the thing on. And you can see at least five or six orbs just Ooh. around the kids, following them around. Every time they went outside, so went the orbs. Every time the kids went back in, they came in. And we'd go, OK, Eric, if it's you, you know, flash by real fast. And he would do it, too, you know. Uh -huh. And then I remember it was Eric and uh, and my, my husband's sister, uh, who's passed at an early age? She was only 31, and um, and I said, "Okay, guys, now with two like acrobats, and you can see the two orbs synchronizingly pass by." Oh my by. gosh! And I, that could be a new Olympic sport, not synchronized swimming, synchronized orb flying. There we go. Have it on camera. I need to put it online so you can hear us say, and we're like, "Okay, new Olympics," you know. <laughs> so you know, he'll do things like that, and and. For me, he communicates a lot to let me know that I'm here because I do get nervous before every reading. I never know what's going to happen or who's going to come through, and I get nervous, and he knows that. And so he tries to calm me down by making my fire alarm bleep one time. Oh. Uh, and so he always he always does that. And I remember I was having a class one day right here in, in my living room with about eight people uh, talking about the third eye, how to open it, how to communicate with your spirits. and. Um, and I was talking about Eric and, and I was like, yeah, he always, you know, uses a fire alarm for me. That's my sign. And right as I say that, whoop, there goes the fire alarm. And everybody's like, oh, that's it. That's it. That is so cool. Well, you know, um, I think you have a lot of courage and that's why your filters are so low because you, you, you share when you read, you share actual names of deceased people, for example. Most mediums can't do that because they're afraid, well, what if there's nobody by that name, etc. So, and just your story, it shows that you have a lot of courage. Now, let's, let me ask Eric something. Eric, uh, what do you think about working with Emma and, and why did you choose her? <laughs> He's saying, I love working with this crazy ass. <laughs> oh my God, Eric. I taught you better manners than that. He's saying, you know, we're just as crazy. Um, and he's saying the reason I picked her is because she has no separation. She has no sense of, you know, we're there and uh, we're here. You know, uh, she doesn't make a separation, he says, between um, the human world and the spiritual world. She knows we're all connected and she knows that we can hear them at any time, at any moment. So she communicates us as part of the family. Um, she says another thing that's different um, than a lot of other mediums is she actually requests us to merge our energy field with her personal energy field. A lot of mediums don't do that because they kind of want to keep, you know, their own energy to themselves. Um, and it, sometimes it's, it's also a sense of um, being individual, you know. This yeah. is me, and you're there, and let's communicate that that's your space and that's my space. And he's saying Emmanuel doesn't, doesn't really have that. She, she does have that sense that... I am Eric, <laughs> and Eric says, "I am Emmanuel. We're all the same, and we're all um, we're all here to um, discover love and to discover a connection with one another." And so, there is really no separation, and I think that's what makes the difference. That's what reduces the filters and the layers of uh, communication. Um, that it has to go through you know sometimes it really needs to go through a wall in, in order to mm. get there yeah. um, and so if you take those boundaries away and if you take those restrictions away then you'll have a lot clearer image and he says you know she's also really good at um, taking herself out of the equation um, uh, the in order, he says, to have a clear communication, to have the information come out really clearly, you have to kind of, as a medium, put your own feelings and your own thoughts 
and your own um, your own ideas about things aside and you really need to you know be completely neutral in that situation and sometimes that can be hard as a human being it can be hard to you know to not have your own opinion um, when you're doing a reading and yeah. so what happens times is opinions or fears kick in like what if it's not that name or what if it's not this or or some mediums really limit themselves and say well we can't do names it doesn't yeah. because they're afraid of making a mistake and so what you do is you the the information that comes in can be distorted uh, or can be twisted by you know let's say your own beliefs you know you believe that is something bad then you know, it'll come out as Ooh, that's bad. You should stay away from that. While the information might be completely different. different. Yeah. And so that's that's why I like working with her. He says is because she keeps she can she has no judgment over anybody or anything. So she completely accepts that even bad things need to happen to people uh, in order to you know for good things to arise. So there is completely no judgment in her, and she has the ability to blend the energies together and to um, completely put herself out of the picture. And that's why he says a lot of times at the end of a reading, she doesn't remember even what was being said. It's almost like she kind of goes in this trance and it just goes blah, 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 blah. Well, Eric, kinda... Eric, do you think that she would be able to trance channel effectively? I know she's tried, but what do you think about that, Eric? He's saying she can 100%. Um, the only thing that's stopping her is is letting go of um, letting go of the body is what he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, she is an Aries, he says, and so she does um, relate to this body as her own. Um, but he says, we're really working on it. And um, I have been able to take over, he says. Um, but she never really disappeared. <laughs> you need to she give her a quick a boot. To, uh, just yeah. quick boot I've to the butt. To, I think she's pulling out or something. I've asked my angels, too. I'm like, why don't you just yank me out? I'm giving you the permission. Yeah. Yank me out. So Eric can come in <laughs> for some reason that's not working. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we're still trying on it. And, and I think because I haven't been channeling for that long, I mean, I've only been doing this professionally for about a year and a half. Um, trans channeling is still something completely different. Oh yeah. Um, because you kind of lose control over what's going on and, Although during a reading, I can put myself completely in neutral. I still have control over my own body and sure. over what, you know, what's being said. Um, but surrendering yourself and, and having another spirit come into you is, is still, I don't know. It just, it, I'm not scared of it. So it's not fear. Um, it has to do with the control that I can't let go. So yeah. hopefully. Um, by the time we get to the Channeling Eric event in September, we'll be able to do to do it, and then uh, we yeah, can do. Yeah, we but, can try it. I, I tell you what, when we come over, when I come over in in uh, in July, we're gonna try. We're gonna all right, try. Good. You'll be around friends. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we'll do it among friends. All right. So um, <laughs> before we before we go on to talk to your higher self, um, first of all, tell us about this event, and also how can people connect with you. Well, um, we're having a Channeling Eric event uh, on September 9th of this year, and um, we had one last year, and it was a good success. Um, it was a lot of fun, and a lot of friendship were formed after that. So um, it's always nice to have to be be able to fully discuss Eric and just you know let everything out, and there's no shame and there's no blockage, yeah. and you don't have to watch what you're saying. You know, there's so much fun. Um, and so this year we have Carrie Mena from The Shiny Show who's coming in. She's flying in from Texas. Um, and she's, you know, she's going to talk about energy healing and, and things like that. And um, it's just a whole day. It starts at 10 in the morning and it should be done around 6 in the evening. Um, and it's also, you know, we, we provide lunch. Um, so where is it? 
Um, it's in a very small city called Bethlehem. Um, um, it's about, I mean, if you look at the map of Belgium, we're not very big. No. <laughs> I mean, if you compare it to Texas, I mean, you could probably, we can fit like 20 times into Texas alone. Uh, but it's like 20 minutes from the French border is where we are. Um, and, you know, we're going to do meditation. We're going to do guided meditation. Um, we're going to do mindfulness movements and exercises. We're going to talk about the e-board. We're going to we're going to have Eric have his his session where he's he's just going to come in and talk about whatever he wants to talk about. And then we're also going to have a QA and a where people can ask their questions. And we're going to have Carrie do her thing. We also have a person coming who um, who's going to give a little bit more explanation about specific water filters. It's a filter that I use, and um, it really cleanses, you know, everything out of it, the fluoride. Oh, good. Uh, so she's going to give this explanation on how it works because it's it's with crystals and everything. Oh, so wow. It's really cool. Um, and how, so, yeah, it's just going to be fun. It's just going to be fun. And um, How can they find out? What's the link they go to? people can go to to find out more? Well, you can go to my website, which is emmanuelmacintosh.com. Um, and it's got all the information there. And if, if anybody needs more information, don't, don't hesitate to send me an email or to connect with me on Facebook. Um, it's 65 euros. So it's about $70, I think. That's for a good a deal week. for lunch so too. That, yeah, that's a good deal. We're trying to keep our prices low so everybody can attend. Um, and so far we got people from uh, all over Europe, uh, from England, from France, from Holland, from Belgium. Great. From Spain, I think. So uh, it's going to be a variety of people. So, you know, this is really fun to connect with people who who understand or who want, who are interested in the spiritual realm and, and who, who love Eric. Um, and you know, Eric's going to pop in and hopefully I'll get to trans channel him. Um, so but how, I know has he's going to play. Has your income been enough to, to support yourself well now? I bet you're booked up pretty good. I'm completely booked up right now until, um, May of next year. <laughs> um, but I did have to raise my prices a little bit because, um, I, I just made it every month so um because um we do pay 21 percent tax in this country Ugh. so i would only but your, your prices way. your prices were very low though yeah so i bring a little bit i hope don't don't shoot me please um but it's just so you know i have to um i can live off of it but i can't save any money and um, because i have two children with autism i need to have a little bit of a savings going yeah, for sure. them I don't know if they're ever going to be able to live independently. Yeah. I've asked Eric. He always says, well, it's really up to them. Yeah. So that's the answer that I get. Um, but I want to make sure that I have something put aside for him. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep my prices so everybody can still enjoy it and, and everybody can connect. Because I know, you know, times are rough. And I know a lot of people who are not in a good place are also not doing well financially. So um, I don't want to take that away. I, want, I don't want to take that chance away that they can communicate with You should with do the, the group phone calls, you know, to charge I a did. very low pr price. Yeah, and then, you know, have, that'd be good. All right, well, let's go on and talk to your higher self, shall we? First of all, I want to ask Emma's higher self, um, what's your, what is your spiritual mission? this lifetime and Eric you can help her because it must be hard he's saying well there's different uh, lessons to be learned in this one he says um, the first one was letting go of ego um, he's saying it has to do with um, Finding self-love and acceptance. Mm, I can see um, that, yeah. And he's saying it's about releasing, releasing the personal need, releasing the personal need to perform. Um, I can see that, I guess. I've always been a person who wanted, who wanted to prove herself to the world. You know, because for years I was hiding. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And so nobody would notice me, nobody would see me. It's, it was almost like I didn't exist. And uh, I can see that when I started feeling more confident, then I wanted the world to see me. I want to say, hey, you know, look at me. Um, and that's probably the ego that he's talking about. Um, so when it comes to self-love, he says, she really needed to accept who she was and she needed to accept her past. Now, are you, uh, when you say he, when you say he says, are you talking to Eric or your higher self? Yeah, I'm letting Eric do the translation. Translating the high, your higher self. I got you. Okay. Uh, right. uh, um, he's saying that that she's saying, <laughs> he's saying that she's saying um, that I needed to heal from the past in order to uh, use it uh, to heal others. So mm -hmm. I needed to go through this uh, so I could become a better coach a better teacher to others um, he's saying because of the past she has now uh, endured different kinds of uh, emotion mm -hmm. different kinds of feelings and so when she connects to people he says she um, she can immediately link or synchronize with that frequency that the people are in and she immediately knows, oh, there's the problem. Even if they're not saying it, mm. she'll say, you were, you were abused. She'll know, even if you're hiding it, even if you've never told anybody, she'll, she will pick it out. And that is what, you know, why she's here. She's, she's here to be a teacher. So she's here to learn self-love. She was mm. here to learn acceptance, especially acceptance of the past, of what had happened. Um, but also acceptance that... Um, Everything happens for a reason. Now, um, did, did you, the, what happened with your grandfather, was that part of a contract? He's saying yes, it was predestined. Um, and it was just a way, um, he says, in order for her to uh, experience self-love, she had to have, into, she had to experience self-destruction first mm. um, in order to see the difference, to feel the difference, and to understand that she is in control of, her life. She is in control of uh, her reality around her. Um, in order to experience that control, he's saying control, you know, that she has, uh, the, that the outcome of the reality is controlled by her thinking. She also needed to get into a spot where she lost every control, where she did not have any control over her body or over her, uh, what she wanted or didn't want. Um, and so a lot of I love this. It's all linked to the acceptance lesson and really learning to re, you know, to love herself. She hated herself. It's true. I couldn't even look myself in the mirror when I was little. Um, I really hated myself. Um, I thought I was disgusting and I didn't feel like I belonged here. And so um, he says her spiritual journey um, was all about grounding herself. It was about making her feel comfortable in who she is um, and, and letting go of all the fears that had been attached to her since she was little. Um, she's still working on the fears, he says. <laughs> We're all working on something. So all, she, he says, it'll never go away, her fears probably fully, but she has been able to not allow her fears to control her life anymore to control her decisions anymore and that's um you that's know good. that's already a victory on its own he says and so he says, you know she's accomplishing what she's here to learn and, and teach that's good he's saying she is but she still has the need of I need more. She still has that need of, you know, I want a better connection and I want this and I want Good. that. What's wrong with that? So, um, she can't let go. <laughs> she can't always let go of the need to show the world. See, I can do it. See, you know, it's almost like he says, she doesn't just want to prove herself to the world that she's good, that she's a good hearted person and that she's here to help. She's also, she, she constantly wants to prove to herself, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Um, and that need, that need for control 
um, and that in some way or form is also based on ego. That's what we're still working on with her. <laughs> this is so weird talking about me and then another. That. Um, well, why was she, why did like? Oh, go ahead. Like people should know. <laughs> I'm confident. I swear. <laughs> I I understand. Um, I guess it just makes me more human um, that, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a medium or not or whether you're connecting with them or not. You know, you're still um, learning every day yourself to um, deal with these human emotions and to um, place them and use them in a more positive way instead of in a more destructive way. So Now, why, why did she have two autistic daughters come into her life? What was the spiritual reason for that? He says because she's always trying. She was always trying to control her future. She was always trying to control where she wanted to go. Um, he's saying what the kids are teaching her is to be mindful, to live in the moment, because they can't be controlled. She she's taught. She's learned that um, they have their own mind and they have their own way of seeing the world. And the only thing she can do is she she has to surrender in the moment and say, okay, I'm going to love you and I'm going to support you and guide you, but I know that I can't control your actions. Um, he's saying they force her to live in the moment. They force her, they forced her to stop worrying about the future and to really live day by day because these kids, he says, are so amazing. They're so incredible. They are the sweetest girls ever. He says, I love playing with them. Um, but he's saying they they really don't think about tomorrow. They don't have dreams like a lot of other people do. They, they focus on here and now, and they can have a good day, and they can have a bad day. Uh, and you can't, you don't know when she, she, he says, when she wakes up, she doesn't know what the day is going to be. And so it forces her to live in the moment and to live mindfully. Um, and what that does is, he says, by living mindfully, uh, we release the fears of the unknown. All right. Well, um, you might have already touched on it, Emma's higher self, but what was she, what is she here to teach again? Um, She's saying she's here to teach compassion um, and she's here to teach that um, no matter what happens to you, you can determine where your future goes. You can determine how you feel and what you think. Um, she's here to help and guide people um, and to help them, of course, communicate um, with the people that they've lost. But mostly she's here to... Um, help people um, to understand and to see that they are in control of their own healing, that they are in charge of that, and that yeah. everybody can give advice, um, but when, when you don't take your own life, you know, when you don't take responsibility for, okay, I'm feeling this way because I'm allowing it, or I'm doing this destructive thing because I'm allowing that. Um, She's here to show people that she could do it, that she could take all of that, you know, because it wasn't just the rape. It, it, there was also, you know, depression for my parents. There was alcoholism for my father. There was, you know, a lot of uh, fighting going on in the house, you know, and me trying to get in between and trying to save everybody. Um, I have good parents. Don't let me get that Oh, yeah, no, no, no. They just really, they've been through a hard patch. Yeah. You know, their life has not been easy. Yeah. Um, and so um, he's saying she's here to guide people to become aware of who they are and to become aware that you yourself are the answer for a better future and you yourself are the answer for happiness. And that's what she's here to teach. That's great. One last question. Can you share another life, past or future, that most influenced her life as Emma? Um, <laughs> Eric is saying, well, let's pick one that I'm in it too, because we've had several lives together already. Oh, fun. Uh, 
So he's um, he's talking about a life that I had with him and my husband and Carrie Mena is in this one as well, um, where um, this is uh, Western times, I guess, cowboy, I don't even know, cowboy times. Um, it looks like I was. Um, That's why you like horses. I love horses. I know. <laughs> Uh, he's saying, you know, a lot of her, a lot of her lives have been on uh, American soil. She's been a Native American as well, and um, he's thinking that maybe that's why I don't have an accent. Um, but he's saying, you know, I was uh, how I was head of a brothel house. I was a female, a prostitute, okay. mm -hmm. um, but I was kind of head of the ladies. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of my department. <laughs> and um, he's saying, you know, that was really. He's saying I was. Um, it looks like he was a sheriff or something, like a law holder or something. Um, and my husband was a, a good friend of Eric. And um, he's saying for her, you know, she was really sweet with the girls, um, almost like the, it, she was their mother. She would take care of all of them. Um, this sounds like the best little ho whorehouse in Texas, that, that uh, maybe with Dolly uh, Parton and uh, Burt Reynolds. Exactly, because oh, yeah. he's the sheriff and Dolly's the madam. But go ahead. Uh, yeah, I we're almost was, out of time. Oops. Um, and yeah, he's just saying that I was really protective over the girls, but I had a really hard time um, with the men um, because he's making me feel like I also kind of had a boss. I also kind of had somebody that I needed to, uh, you know, give him money or, uh, and it, you know, there was a lot of abuse from the men, it looks like. Um, but, you know, he's saying it was all about compassion. It was a life for me about compassion. It was about caring for everybody, including the people that were not so nice to me. I still had to be nice to them. I had to um, find peace in that. Um, he's saying, <laughs> I was in love with her. Oh. <laughs> her was in love with me, but so was my husband. <laughs> uh oh. And so. Were you um, married? He's saying, let's just say that we let her do the choosing, and she chose Gerald. <laughs> oh, Eric! <laughs> saying, I'm lost. Denied, Eric. You are well, de totally um, denied. But he says, you know, uh, Carrie Mena was one of my girls, and uh, we were very close. And and he eventually fell for her, so he actually went for her. Um, and. But he says, you know, the friendship between me and Gerald was so strong that even the the women didn't didn't allow we didn't allow them to break us apart. So we just accepted that I chose uh, the one person, um, and that was that. He said, but yeah, it was really a love. Of, it was a life about compassion. It was a life about acceptance, um, but it was also a life of of uh, being under control by other people. Um, it's about, you know, surrendering and say, okay, my life is in your hands and I'll do whatever you say. Um, so Eric, says, you didn't arrest her then, huh? Wasn't that illegal back then? You're the sheriff? Mm -mm, that was not illegal. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, good. That was fun. Okay. <laughs> um, and he said, you know, um, when we look at her life now, um, she's taken that compassion with her. She, she's still, ever since she was little, she would take care of everybody. Her parents, her brother, you know, people around her. She's always had that feeling of taking care of everybody. Um, only in this part, it's about being in control of my own decisions. It's about me making the decisions in this life um, and, and um, sharing, spreading the word of, of compassion to others. Um, um, that's something awesome. that she couldn't do in the other life. She was restricted in what she was allowed to say or allowed to do. Um, so it's about similar things. It's about compassion again, but this time it's about being able to share that compassion with others um, and share them about acceptance and about self-love. So That's awesome. Eric, any final words? You want to ask her higher self anything or, or do you want to say anything yourself? He's saying, you know, I just love her. That's all. I love her. Aww. And uh, 
He says, I've always loved her in other lives. We've been, uh, we've had a life together as partners, mm -hmm. uh, as husband and wife. Um, and um, I still carry that love within my heart for her, he says. And um, he'd be crushing he on Emma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why he flirts. <laughs> Oh, he's a big flirt. He is. He's a flirt. I hear so many women go, oh, he's a tits. I'm like, oh, he's such a flirt. Mm. Uh, but yeah, he's he's just saying, you know, he's saying, I, I'm i glad that I got to bring you guys together. Um, and I know that a lot of uh, a lot of exciting things will happen uh, between us. And um, he's saying, I can't wait for you guys to meet. I, I I'm going to crawl into her body and give you a big hug, Mom. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. All right. I, well, I, 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 can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be so fun. It's just too far away. Dang it. All right. I guess we're out of time, I see. So thank you so much, Emma. That You're was welcome. a very courageous story. Um, wow. And Eric, thank you so much for bringing Emma to me. I love you. He's saying I love you, Mama, very much, okay? Love you, Emma. You guys check her out, www.emmanuelmackintosh.com. E-M-A-N-U-E-L-L-E-M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H.com. And I will put that on the right here. All right. Bye. Love ya. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Preparate. <laughs>